And hello, welcome. <laughs> it's okay. Welcome to solo playthroughs. It was a hard sentence. I just couldn't get all the words out. So here we are playing Apiary, uh, which is a another. Uh, it's a another. It's a yeah another review copy from Stone Meyer Games. Uh, so they sent me Apiary. They have sent me Wingspan. They have sent me a the extra um, encounter cards for Scythe. Uh, might get expeditions from them, so we'll see. Uh, this game is uh, got all of the goodness of things that we love about Stonemaier and some of the... Eh, okay. Um, it is absurdly large <laughs> for what it is. Um, I, I, board game designers have just decided that everybody owns a board game table the size of a swimming pool. Uh, fortunately for me, this is not a huge problem, but it's a thing. Like, I don't know why this is as big as it is, uh, but it is. And uh, I think in a four or five player game, that's, uh, I guess, what does it play? Yeah, it plays five. Um, I can see that being a, a problem for, for some games. Um, the I really like this game. Let's, let's kind of cut to the chase. Uh, what's up, White Donkey says, woo! Uh, I really like this game competitively. I surprised... I am surprised by how much I like this game competitively. I have played this uh, probably a half dozen times with friends. I have found each game interesting. I have found each game um, engaging. I have found the decisions to be very uh, dynamic and rich. And I have found there to be a, a surprising amount of depth for a game which is relatively simple and straightforward. We were talking uh, kind, of a, kind of a new take on worker placement. So really love it. It One of the things that I think is fascinating about this game, because so many things just feel broken, but they just work. Like, it's just so many things. Like, oh my gosh, like that's crazy strong. And then it's like, there's a bunch of things that are crazy strong. So they kind of all balance each other in a way that kind of makes sense. In the past, the victory, I think there's a lot of different things you could explore. Um, the solo game is fine. Look, I like Atoma Factory a lot. Obviously, my favorite of Atoma Factory is what they've done with Gaia Project. And I think one of the things I love about Gaia Project is that Atoma Factory was forced to play within the confines of that game where you can't there's no timer, right? It's six rounds. And as a player in Gaia Project, you, you get to do everything you want to do or everything that uh, at least you have a fair chance, <laughs> right? Because you're trying to build this engine and build this world and and the the Atoma can't force the game to be end over early. And I feel like a lot of Atomas of competitive games that are turned into the solo games are essentially... The, the gimmick, and I don't know, gimmick's a bad word. The thing that makes them work as a solo game is by constraining the game into a smaller window so the player has to be super efficient with their turns. Um, and, you know, it just makes it a very different kind of game. Maracaibo was like that. Um, I think a lot of Wingspan is like that. A lot of solo games are like that, where you're like, eh. I guess Wingspan is not like that, because Wingspan, you have you have a defined number of turns. So yeah, maybe I didn't feel it as much in Wingspan. Maracaibo for sure was a game where it's like, game's really quick, figure it out. Um, and that was not great. So I don't know. I think it's an interesting solo exercise. I probably shouldn't be playing an expert. I am going to get walloped, but um, almost guaranteed. I might pull it out. We'll see. Well, there are 20 different factions. Two of them you do take out for the solo game. So we have 18 different factions. They all do have their fun little thing about it. There are five different hive mats. Uh, and then there's just a myriad of different tiles that we could see. And that's 
all going to radically change how this game uh, plays out for sure. So we have Civil Fear. Greg, this game is gorgeous. So happy to see you playing it. I haven't bought it yet, but this playthrough may sway me. ID Jester, what's up, buddy? What is going on, Solo in chat? How is everything going? White Donkey, I really wish they would put Footprint on the side of the box with game time and player counts. And Brian, uh, a.k.a. Silver Fear, says, that's a great idea. Yeah, this game, look, if you have the right group for this game, I, I think it really can fit. Um, it's one of those rare games that I think has enough depth for, like, your hardcore gamers, but enough simplicity for pretty much anybody, um, you know, depending on how you want to teach it and how deep you want to go. Uh, you know, there are certain parts of the game you can kind of put to the side for a first or second play. And and I think that's actually a good thing for a lot of games where you're like, I only need to learn 70% of this game and I can still be competitive. I think that's absolutely the case with this. So let's kind of talk through the, the different actions. Well, first, let's talk through the theme. The theme of this game is that humans are extinct. Uh, we had our time on Earth. We decided to uh, waste it. Uh, apparently... <laughs> Global warming came or something happened, and uh, humanity is gone. And in its wake, the bees have emerged as the dominant species on Earth, uh, at least the most intelligent, and they have found all our technology. They have improved upon our technology, and not only have they become masters of Earth, they have become masters of the universe uh, with He-Man and She-Ra and all of them. Um, they are She-Ra. Sheila? Shira? I think it's Shira. So they went out and um, are now, we have a bunch of just space bee factions, and they are competing to see who is the grandest space bee faction of them all. So there's a lot of things that are like kind of thematic, re thematically related to bees, but they're bees in space, and it's like a very wacky theme that somehow adds to the, the pleasure I have in playing it. So um, I think that all is a good thing. Your workers are these four-sided rectangles, and they age. Now, they age from one to two to three to four. Now, one of the things I don't love about how this is designed is, for some reason, instead of having things rotate this way, which just feels intuitive to me and all my friends, nope, they actually rotate the other way, which feels just not natural. <laughs> It's a small thing, but I do wish that was different. We are going to be playing against the Otoma. Now, the Otoma, again, Otoma Factory, that doesn't play by the rules. The normal faction only has four workers. The Otoma is going to have five workers. Specifically, they'll have three gray workers and two yellow workers. And then they're going to use these gray hibernation tokens. And I'll explain what all that is as we go. Um, we are going to, let's randomize some of the stuff. So we're going to randomize my starting hive mat. Boop, boop, boop. I rolled a one. We get the lock. Man, I don't really love the lock, but we're going to get it. We're going to get it anyway, kids. So we're going to get the lock. So um, I do think it is the the one I've had the most struggles with in all of these starting hives. Um, but uh, I could see the power there. I'm just not sure I'm, I'm unlocking it correctly. Now... If this entire mat is filled at the end of the game, I get eight additional points. Additionally, there are these things called frames that can be added to expand our hive, and that all becomes our hive. And if you finish, you fill a frame, that's eight points. You can indeed add a frame and fill that and not fill your hive and get eight points for the frame. You will want, you're normally in most games going to want at least two frames. Um, Against the Atoma, though, maybe you should just get one because the Atoma, especially at the expert level, does move this game along pretty, pretty fast. All right, so we have our hive. Now let me figure out my starting uh, my starting faction. I'm going to roll this twice. We're going to pick one. So I rolled a 17. Again, there's only 18 in my hand. So we have Artie, and I rolled an 11. So there's 17 left. So 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. We got Lama. Now Lama is one of the starting factions. And or one of the recommended starting factions, should I, I should say, and we can tell that because it has this green star. Now, Artie could be very strong. I uh, like it. Now, you'll notice that your starting faction tile has a faction tile and then these two storage tiles. And then your starting resources, they would both get exactly the same resources. That is not always the case. A lot of these factions give you different resources. But the starting resources you can get here are going to be the ones that are highlighted. So, this spot here can hold either a fiber, which looks like that, 
I'm sorry, that's a pollen, a pollen, which looks like that, or a fiber. But now since the pollen, the, since the fiber is the one that is highlighted, we will start with a fiber. I will take Artie because I think it's a much more interesting game. And I think it's a, 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 a faction that's better suited to keep pace with the insanely fast Atoma. And I think that will work well with the log as well. So we'll see. There is an alternate variant of this game where it's more an advanced uh, advanced variant, I should say, where if there's like four players, you deal out four hives, you deal out four starting factions, then you draft, um, which I think is an interesting way to go. It might be something I start doing with my group, because indeed, we are not done exploring this game. So I'm going to have already right there. Now, you'll notice all faction tiles have a regular side and then an upgraded side. Already special ability, and I'll explain this as we go, is whenever you place a worker, I can adjust its starting strength. I can adjust its strength by one or two. I can adjust the strength up one or down one. I start with a uh, a two worker and a one worker. The remainder of my workers are going to stay right there as level one workers next to the grow action. All right, so again, faction tile, two starting tiles. Now, when this upgrades, uh, whenever I place a worker, I can adjust its strength plus one or minus one. If I do, I gain a point. So that could be... A very nice source of regular points for me. So we're going to have this two worker and a one worker. Again, it tells me on already that's what I get. They're going to go in my active pool. When I build hexes around this tile, again, it's really three tiles in one, I will get whatever I cover. Two parts of my hive will give me an additional level one worker, assuming there's one in the pool and the other ones would give me resources. Again, that's fiber, that's water, that is either fiber, pollen, or water. Now there are two other kinds of resources or kind of advanced resources. They're annoyingly close in color, which I don't really love, but they do very different things. And so we have honey pots, which look like that, and we have uh, wax, which look like thimbles, like squatty thimbles. So we're gonna put this all here. Uh, great. You'll notice that there are spots for cards to go. You can only put two seed cards as the game, uh, at the beginning of the game, you can only have two seed cards. These are ways to get points, and I'll explain that as we go. But for every frame I add, I can, the first two frames will unlock the ability to add a third and a fourth seed card, respectively. Uh, seed cards, let me talk about these a little bit. Seed cards are have three uses for them. The first use is I can discard it to get a resource, again, a general resource, so either a fiber, a water, or a pollen. I could discard it before or after my action for a turn to do what's in the top part. Again, it's totally discarded. Or I can plant it. Now, it's hard to always find ways to plant. Mostly, you're going to plant by putting a level 4 worker on research. If you plant the card, then I can place it here. And now it is an endgame scorer for me. And that's those points will range from like 3 up to... 20. I mean, if you get the right card with the right build. So it can be very, very strong. So it's a really like you, you have a lot of games that have dual use cards. I think this is a really unique game to have a try use cards of sorts. Uh, now there are four cards that were removed from the deck for the solo game. So there were two factions removed, four of these seed cards, and actually one of those uh, carve tokens. And I'll talk about that as we go. Uh, Alfred Wallace, glad, glad to see this one too. Hello, Alfred. Hope everything is well in the Dakotas. White Donkey says, yes, thank you to Brian. And Jester says, depending on how this goes, I might have to pick this up for myself. That's some press pressure on you, Solo. Don't mess it up. <laughs> I will try not to mess it up. All right. I'm going to get walloped, by the way. I, again, I, I, if someone's like, I'm going to play this solo only, I'm like, oh, I'd be like, Ugh. I don't know if I would recommend this. And I really, really love it uh, as a competitive game. So, um, you know, again, but if you're like someone who loves Maracaibo solo or you love, like, you know, uh, Wingspan solo, then, man, this is right up your alley. Again, I love Gaia Project solo. That is just something that absolutely works for me. And I do think because it really allows the full game to breathe the way it normally does in a competitive situation. Now, I'm going to set up these tokens here. Uh, these are our exploration tokens. Now, we're actually going to flip them face up, but I'll shuffle them a bit face down. And let's see what we got. So that is two pollen. This is a water. This is a queen's favor, which I will explain. That's two fiber. 
That's a seed card, which I've already talked about. That is one fiver. That's a seed card. That's a queen's favor. That is a pollen. That's one point. And that's a regular resource of your choice. So actually, some of the very strong explosion tokens are not in this game. Those two are indeed the strongest. They both give you two resources. So the seed cards can also come in handy. Now the explore spot, when you go to the explore spot, you would take a worker and I can move our mothership. Now this mothership is supposed to have like a stand, but it doesn't stay on it. It just falls off. So I'd like screw it. So this is basically what we fly around it. It looks like a big B. The mothership's going to go around. If I have a level one worker, I can move it to one orthogonally adjacent space. Wherever I go, I can take the exploration token. If there is one there, I will get whatever is shown. So this allows me to take one resource. Then I will put a planet down. The planet's going to also produce a resource. I'll do that at least once, and I'll explain all of that action when I do that. Now, if I go there with a level two worker, guess what? I can do the same thing, except I can move two spaces orthogonally. I cannot move off a space and move back. You have to end in a different space than when you started. And now it'll make more sense when you see some of the planets that come out. If I go there with a level four worker, I get to get a benefit of a level four planet or of a planet that might have a level four power is really how I should have said that. Uh, you will note that there are two explore spots and how much you can move the mothership is going to be additive. So if I have a one and a two there, I can actually move the mothership to three spaces, which can be super helpful. And that includes whether they're your bees or the bees of another player. So there is some interaction in that and you will be bumping each other off of spaces and further along in spaces etc etc the advanced action is the main way that you're going to be filling out your hives and your frames there are three different kinds of hexes that you'll be adding to your hive the top one is going to be farms those are the green ones the middle one the ones that are blue are your recruits and the bottom ones the ones i'm going to put out right now are your developments so let's take them one at a time your farms actually it's will go bottom of the top since that's how I'm laying them out. Your bottom ones are basically your technological breakthroughs. So when you place it, you have to you have to spend wax for them. So these all actually all cost one wax. They range from one wax to believe up to three wax. And when you build them, you do that benefit immediately. So this says gain one wax for each Recruit that you have. This says you can discard up to five resources from your hive to get a point for each. What I recommend it. This says you get to reactivate up to two adjacent developments. So it can be very, very strong. Right? They have all one-time abilities that can be very strong. There also might be things that score off of them as we'll explain. Now your recruits, they also have abilities on them, but instead of being one-time abilities, they are abilities that are triggered repeatedly throughout the game. Now these are basically special bees that you have recruited to your special little hive, right? So let's kind of put them out. Now, unlike the developments, which cost wax to get almost all the time, the recruits are going to cost pollen. So this one costs three pollen, this one costs two, this one costs two. You'll note that they have a value on the left. That's how many points they are worth at the end game. So these range from zero up to two. Some are worth three points as you go. Uh, there also are going to be... Um, yeah, that's it. Now, so these recruits, the recruit on the left is an artisan. He costs three pollen. Every time you take the carve action, it costs one less honey. That's very strong. This is the agriculturalist. When you retrieve, you get to collect one additional income from farms. I'm about to talk about that. And then we have the caretaker. Whenever you hibernate, you gain two resources. I love all of them. They could be very strong. Now let's talk about the farms. Your farms are basically the engine building aspect, the way you get resources, the way you get points, the way you get Queen's Favor, uh, just in the process of retrieving. Because what's going to happen is you're going to put all of your little worker bees out on the board. And you could still have some left, but as long as you have at least one on the board, you can decide to retrieve. And for each bee that you retrieve from the board or from your landing area, which I'll explain during the game, when you retrieve, you actually can take, for each bee you retrieve, you can get income from a different farm that's on your board, which can be super, super nice. So if I retrieve four bees and I have four farms, I can get four bits of income. Again, those are normally resources, points, or Queen's Favor, and I'll come back to what Queen's Favor are 
in a minute. The other thing that farms do for you is they give you storage spots. Because in the beginning of the game, you only have these two storage spots that are part of your faction tile. Well, now you're going to have additional storage spots. So this farm costs two fiber and two water, and it gives you two additional storage spots for wax or honey. Additionally, in income, you can get yourself three points. Very, very strong. I like it. But again, it's super expensive. We have this one. This farm only holds one wax. It's all it can hold. What can it hold? Wax. Anything else? No, just wax. It costs a fiber and a water, and you can get two points in income. This can hold a wax or a honey, <laughs> and an income gives you one resource of your choice. So it's really weird that I did not get any farms that hold actual normal, like not non-advanced resources, but that is what it is. Now, you'll notice in the advanced space, the benefit of putting a four worker there is you gain three points in addition to gaining the one tile. Again, you're only getting one tile per action. And you, so if I put a level four there, I get uh, three extra points. Um, if I put a one there, the one, there's a one printed on the border, so there's no other B there. The minimum number value of the com combination there as you're adding them is going to be two. It has to be a four for those three points. So the combination equals four does not matter, four or higher. Um, so again, this has to be a four, but for these numbers up here, you're looking at the combination. So one plus one is a two means I can buy anything from this row. If I went here with a four worker, the four plus one, I could buy anything from that row. If I had a two worker there, and then I bump that two worker, mine or an opponent's. Now that equals a four. So I can buy from this row or from this row. So again, just want to pay attention to that and um, know what row, row or rows you can buy from when you take the advanced action. So finding ways to get tiles that don't require the advanced action is a big part of doing well in this game and trying to fill up your hive and one or two frames as well. Now, the carving tiles are unique among the tiles. So I'm going to skip grow for a second and go to carve. The advanced tiles, the farm, the recruit, and the development, they're going to keep replenishing over the course of the game. The carving tiles are, nope, first come, first serve, and they are worth a heck of a lot of points on the expert level. So at the end of the game, every farm tile the Atoma has will be worth two points. Every recruit the Atoma has will be worth three. Every development they have will be worth four, and every carving tile will be worth seven. In the first, last game I played off camera, they had five carving tiles. That was me playing bad. So good times. All right. These all cost honey. Of course they do. What else would they cost? The structural support gives you three per per wax you have at the end of the game. Good luck with that. This gives you three per remaining hibernation token. I'll explain that. This gives you three. Uh, lose three points immediately, but then you get to copy the hive tile in another hive. Interesting that they don't take that out of a solo game. This costs one honey, score all points on all adjacent uh, developments. That's an interesting strategy. So basically, you'd want to put that somewhere in your hive and have it surrounded with developments that have point values. The point values here aren't very high, but a lot of those will go up to two or three, but that will require a lot of wax to make that happen. This is three per adjacent tile, including faction tiles. Uh, interesting. So that's cluster, but that's three honey to get. And then this one is four per exploration token. I find this token, this, that tile very, um, there's a potential for it to be rather broken, especially in a two player game. I, one of the things I, I'm confused about in this game, and I do wonder if this is going to be like the normal, and I don't mean this like negatively, it's going to sound really negative. A lot of Snowmire games have come out and there's been like an errata within a month. I kind of wonder if there's going to be an errata within a month kind of balancing some things. There are a lot of tokens that say max 16 points, max 12 points. And then there's a lot of tokens that don't. And I don't understand. <laughs> I almost feel like this should be, hey, each carving can score our max of 16. Makes some sense. Um, or 12 or whatever. Like, I don't understand why they have not put the max on some things, but they did on others. Four points for exploration token is really strong. Like, I mean, I saw one of my friends got 28 points off that tile. Uh, in a game, and and that's uh, that's a lot. So I, I don't I don't know why. But again, there's a lot of things that feel a little bit broken about this game. 
and they usually balance out. That is one that I've seen that actually hasn't really balanced out in the games that I've played. So we'll see if I can get it or if the Atoma steals it. I will talk about how the Atoma moves and their decision making as we go. They have a very simple Atoma system, which I have come to appreciate. This can come off the board. Uh, we still have... Uh, so carving, again, is basically advanced. You're putting the, the, the carving tile on your board. They're first come, first serve. There's only six in the two-player game. There's only six in a three-player game as well. The other side of this board is a four- or a five-player game. They cost honey. And you can only carve with a level four worker. So don't try to go there with anyone who is not a fully mature B. Duh. That makes sense. What's going on with the chat? Nothing. Excellent. All right. We have three more actions, which get pretty interesting. First, we have the grow action. If you go there with a level four worker, you immediately, that's how you get to, you, that's how you get to the upgraded side of your faction board so you're like great i have grown and now i have access to the power i will want to do that quick very quick with Artie, because that one point every turn will definitely add up so um additionally for each power of worker i spend i can do certain things i could spend that strength so if i go there with a one strength worker i can use that strength and a pollen to gain a level one worker to my active pool if I go there with the two strength worker, I can spend any two basic resources and I can uh, spend that two strength to get a frame to add to my hive. If I go there with a level three worker, I can do either the top thing three times or I can do the top thing once and the bottom thing once. If I go there with a level four, not only up here my faction tile, I can do the top thing four times, although I only have three extra workers. So, you know, use common sense there. I could do the top or the bottom thing twice or I could do any combination thereof. So you're spending strength and resources to do various things. Research action is very very important. You probably only want to go there as a level four worker, just my advice, but you know, if you, you do you. Um, so if you go there with a level four, you get to draw four cards out of there, keep one, and then immediately plant one card that you have. It can be the card you just gained. It could be a card you already had from other means. Who really cares? But you are that's the way you plant cards. And again, you can only plant four cards. Just a way to get a lot of points, especially if the Atoma is smushing you in carvings. Alright, let's go to the convert action. The convert action, I can put a level... Um, one, two, three, or four worker, like anywhere else. If I go there, except for the car, which has to be a four. If I go there with a level four, I get to teach a dance. Who said there'd be dancing? I did. Great. Dance for the future. Excellent. Now, when you do a dance, what you can do is you're going to take one of these equations and you're going to make an equation that works for you. So, for instance, I really want honey. I could say, great, I'm going to do this dance. I've taught that dance. And I can spend a point now to do a honey. Now, how many times can I do that? Well, it's going to be the same over here. You're spending the strength of your worker. So here I could spend my worker. I could, I could do that four times if I was there with a the level four worker. So you're spending four points, getting four honey. I have to have the points to lose, but that can be really strong. In a competitive game, if someone does a dance that you designed, you get a queen's favor every time they do that. In a solo game, since the Otoma does not teach a dance, nor will it use your dance, you just get four queen's favor. And again, I'll talk about the queen's favor track in the end. Now, you'll note that we have all of these tokens here. You, When you teach a dance, you have access to all of them, and you can teach whatever dance you want. And then you'll just take this little cube to indicate, hey, I taught that dance. That was me. Look at me. I'm a choreographer. So this one, be, I can do a dance of, I don't know, maybe I can do a dance of water and a queen's favor, and I can get two points and a knowledge card every time I do that. That could be another strong play. It just depends on how you want to build your strategy. But again, to teach a dance, you have to be there with a level four. And that is not always the easiest thing to do because level fours, you want to do a lot of things with level fours. You want to go to carvings. You want to go to you want to go to research. I mean, you want to do the things that get you a lot of points. So there are a lot of competing priorities. Now, say I have level four workers on the board. So I was like, hey, they, they age. They go from one to two to three to four. Oh my gosh, what happens now? Well, if you have a level four worker on the board and he either gets bumped or you do a retrieve so you have to take it off the board, 
it immediately has to hibernate. That dude is done. So he goes to the hibernation comb. This is only used in a three-player game. So there are eight hibernation spots. This is also your timer for how the game goes. As soon as the eighth hibernation spot is full, everybody, including the person who put the last hibernation token on the hibernation comb, has one more turn. I do wish it was even turns plus one. I don't understand why it's not. <laughs> Seems like the kind of game that screams for it, but what the heck do I know? So it's, again, person who places it, everyone has one more turn, including that person. Or even just don't even get that person one more turn. Like, it's really, like, it's a really strong thing to be the one to place the eighth on here. And, and uh, I, I don't love it, I, the way they, they've done that. So, but again, what do I know? Um, so when you go in the hibernation comb, uh, you're going to take one of your little hibernation tokens. You're going to cover up a spot that you want. You take the corresponding resource. Three of these spots will refresh things in the advanced section. And then that level four worker, because now that he's sleeping in the hibernation comb, he just comes back here and he'll be a level one in the grow action or a new worker pops up that you could potentially gain as a grow action. At the end of the game, there are majority bonuses. The person who has the most in this section of five will get seven points. If you have at least one, if you don't have the most, you'll get two points. Uh, here, it's a person who has two will get three points. Uh, and if it's two and one, the person who has one will get nothing. There is no second place over here. In a three-player game, I, I do like the the third hibernation comb a lot I, I think this game does play a little bit sweeter at three solo bonolo hey everybody it is so unusual to watch a live playthrough and not listen to greg at 1.5 speed <laughs> i'm sorry man i wish you could fast forward me in real time that'd be sick and what's up scott space bees excellent on that note i think we're ready to go I feel good. Uh, I should probably take stock of what my plan is here. Plus, I mean, I, I'll tell you what. Well, first, I got to get some points. So one of the things, the score track, the first player starts supposedly on the zero space, but it says one here. And so that's kind of a screw up. So, but it says first player, second player. It is what it is. Um... I'm wondering if I can get enough honey to try to get three of these carving tiles, but that's like really hard. And uh, the the Atoma is definitely going to be chasing them, but if I could keep them away from some of these carving tiles, that could be super helpful. What's up, Philip? This is interesting. It is interesting. It's a really impressive game. There's a lot I like about it. Like I, I do have my little like quibbles, but they are indeed only quibbles. I have my friends and I have had a very uh, fun time exploring this game for sure. So, and you're a space bee. So what else, What could be better? What could be better? Nothing. All right. Excellent. Uh, we are going to, the Atoma does go first on their turn. We're going to flip this over. This should look familiar. If anyone's used to how Atoma factory does their, um, a lot of their Atomas, right? They have a support card and then we have our action card. So first we're going to look at the action card. There's three possible actions. So we are only care about the yellow bees they have right now. If they only had zero or one yellow bee left in their supply, they would retrieve the rest of them. So either all of them or just one. They only have two yellow bees. And they would get two points. They have two in their supply. So we're going to skip that. They could do carve two. If they had a level four yellow bee in their supply, they would do the carve action. And the two means is that they would basically start in this like – this this pattern here and they would just go until they get to their second actual tile that's still on the board but they don't have a level two worker a, a level four worker so they cannot do the carve action so instead they're going to do the advance they're going to take the strongest b they have which is a three and they're going to go to the advance section which is hither they as a level three worker are going to gain a farm and the development We'll score these at the end of the game. We'll put them up there. Now we're also going to remove these two. They go away. It just lets us see a lot more tiles in a solo game. These come out. We'll replenish. I'm going to flip it at my face for no good reason. So this is I can get a water and a queen's favor. I did not explain the queen's favor trick, did I? I did not. Uh, let me get to that. 
Uh, which is helpful because a bunch of this stuff involves Queen's favor. All right. What is Queen's Favor? The Queen's Favor check goes from 0 up to 25, and you get points. The points are very stacked toward the end. Uh, in a solo game, I don't see how you're getting very high on this. Depend there are some factions that really help accelerate this, but I've seen games where everybody was at 25. I've seen games where no one was past the 8, and that's only 4 points. So, like, again, it's one of those things that if you're going to do it, do it early, do it often, and... You're going to really try to make that work. Now, I'm pretty loath <laughs> to bump, to do anything that's going to bump the Atoma. Just, I <laughs> I really don't want to speed them up, get them closer to um, to uh, to becoming the, you know, the next, the next age. So I'm going to try to avoid advancing right now, but that is normally a, uh, a pretty obvious thing. I really want that carve tile, though. Whoa. I want that so bad. Or the caretaker. They're all good. I have no... I have no pollen. That pollen up there is pretty sick. Ah, oh, man. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I am going to do. I'm going to turn this one... Do you want to do that? I'm going to leave resources to grow for sure. Put that on the board there. All right. I'm going to spend this, make this one a two because I can. That's my ability. I'm going to put it there in the explore. I'm going to explore adjacent here. I'm going to take this exploration token off the board. That immediately gives me a pollen. Boom. I have room for it. Now I'm going to take the top planet. The planet is Sapin. Now, since Sapin has, I didn't fully explain this during the overall teach, Sapin has two boxes. I can decide that I want Sapin to also produce pollen. That makes sense why the exploration token has a pollen on it. And then I can go ahead and take a pollen right there. And I will want a farm that allows me to fit more pollen. But of course, the farms that have come out are preventing this. So I'm just going to take this to pollen and call it a day. Um, I might go ahead and get that caretaker because that could be super helpful. All right, we're going to go to the Atomas next turn. So they're going to flip this over. All right, we care about yellow. If they have zero or one yellow, they only have one they're going to retrieve. So they're going to take this guy back. When they retrieve, he will age. He's now a four. And they are going to gain two points for their hard work. That's it. You only do one action. We ignore the rest of it. But now they have a level four yellow, which indeed means that they are going to start carving. Oh, the joys. So on my turn, I'm going to take my level two worker. I'm going to make it a three. And I'm going to put this here. So the com combination there is three plus one. I can get anything in these two rows. And I actually don't mind. I think getting another place to put some honey pots will be pretty strong. And I could retrieve, get. Oh man, I have no place to put. But I'll have a place then. Never mind. So I'm going to spend the cost is on the bottom. It's going to cost a fiber and a water. This game does come with this nice fancy tray. Ooh. We're going to take this and we're going to put this. Uh, man, am I going to have a worker? Nope, I will not. I'm going to have to. So we're, oh, I can get a worker now. That would be nice. I'm going to put this sucker here. Uh, but I need the resource to do what I want. Shh. So many confusing problems. Do I want to do that now? Probably. I can get a worker, but then I'm still going to be short on the fiber. I could get the fiber from there. That would be interesting. No, I think I retrieve... Let's AZ suckers and start doing some other stuff. 
Go live with the four. I could teach a dance. Don't have a lot of points. I'm gonna wanna grow and get another faction tile out here. Alright, I'll put this. Yeah, it's not gonna be great. I'll put this here and I'm gonna get a level one. No, I won't. I'm gonna put this. Get any resource. I'll gain a water. Fine. I'll put this here and I will get a fiber. Excellent. I'm, I'm going to try to blitz carving tiles. I'm not sure it's going to work, but I'm going to do that anyway. So since I cover that up, I get a... Um, now this can... Now my faction tile here, this can indeed go next to my storage. When you place a tile, it has to go next to a tile you have. That doesn't count the two starting storage tiles. So that is that. I did not gain my level one workers. I'm totally good with that. We are going to move on to the atonement start. Oh, we move these over. One... Now that's a nice tile. If you were trying to blitz Queen's Favor, that three Queen's Favor income can be pretty sick. Thomas turn. It's their third turn. We care about gray now. Now, are there zero or one grays left in their supply? Nope, there are three. Do they have a level four gray to carve? No, they don't. So they're going to take the three, and they're going to go to research. When they go to research, they're going to get three points for a level three worker. And since we're playing extra mode, they're going to get one more point, so they're going to get four points. They get up to seven, like a lot of Atomas. They're going to score a lot of points during the game. The question is, can you catch up to them in the end game? I have to retrieve. So I'm going to retrieve. This three becomes a four. This two becomes a three. Now, um, I only have one farm, so I can take a basic resource. I'm going to take a water. Now, I could take a fiber or a pollen. It's like, oh, I can't fit it. And they get a queen's favor instead. Because at the end of your turn, for each resource you cannot store on your board, uh, whether that is a basic resource, a wax, or a honey, you can take a queen's favor. That is one way to artificially increase that. But now I'll, I'll take a water because, indeed, that could be helpful. I will want to get another farm tile or two pretty soon. All right, so that's done. Retrieval was my turn. So that's all she wrote. Yeah, I do want, I think I do want the artisan. Make these really cheap for me. All right, Atoma's turn. Atoma is going to look at how many yellow workers they have. Do they have zero? Nope, they have two. They have a level four, so they're going to carve two. We're going to put this here. Carve two. The support card tells us we start here and loop around. So one, two, they grab longevity. This goes to their stack of tiles, and that's their entire turn. All righty then. My turn. I'm going to come over here and spend my three pollen and grab this guy, and I'm gonna put him over, I'll ooh, I could do, try to do that. That would be interesting. Score an all adjacent, ooh, do I try to get really strong on wax? Don't love those. That could be interesting. So I'm going to put this here and gain a level one worker, which lets me carve for one less. Um, I mean, is, that, is that what I want to do? I don't know. Yeah, it's pot committed now, so it is what it is. And then because, I, again, I put covered that up, I get a level one worker. These come over. All right. We're going to go to the Atoma's turn. We care about grays. Are there zero or one? No. They would not do a 
uh, carving action, no matter what, even if they had a four, which is rare, they're going to do a convert action instead. So they're going to come here. It's a level two expert mode. They're going to get three points. One, two, three, which is gross because I did want to do convert, but I do not want to bump the Atoma because that is just going to help them uh, age. And uh, that's just that's just not helpful, kids. And I don't want to bump them from carve. So we don't have a lot of great options. I could... Wait a second. I should have done this in a different order. I could have aced into a four, but that would have been dumb. Right. So remember my faction ability, I can age workers plus or minus one. I could have aced into a four. That would have been a little premature. I'm going to instead age this. This guy is already a four. I'm going to put him on grow. That's going to let me upgrade my tile. I have no resources. Think about this, Greg. Think about this, Greg. How do I want to pull this off? All right. I'm going to get resources first. I'm going to spend my one, upgrade it to a two. I do want to add a frame. Oh, that's going to be bad. I could put that there. That all makes sense. I'm going to make that a two. We're going to explore. We need to get some resources. I can only move two. I'll move here. I'll take a resource of my choice. We'll put this out. Ha! We wanted was a, some of the planets give you an additional resource, so there is a bit of luck of the draw there. So the resource of the choice I would have taken would have been a pollen, and then I could make this planet produce fiber and take a fiber. Now, on a subsequent turn, I could go back to Sapin, and since there's a box there, I can have it produce an additional resource, uh, which can be pretty useful. So that's fine. Yeah, I do. Oh, man, I need to, I need to add a frame. So doing grow, I'm missing out on some points by not having my thing upgraded yet, but I, this is the order. I just kind of needed to do it. Atoma's turn. They all have one gray left, so they are going to retrieve their grays. This becomes a three. This becomes a four. And the Atoma gets two points. On my turn, I'm going to go to the grow action. I have a four strength worker, so I get to upgrade this. And I'm going to spend uh, two resources to get a frame. I'll put this frame. I can't put it adjacent to that. I could put it adjacent to this. Now, again, you're not limited by this board. I can't put it there. It has to something has to be touching something I already have. Uh, I'll put it over here. Why not? I have to find a way to get wax, but wax is very expensive. All right, uh, the Atomas turn. Yeah, sometimes you're getting wax income, which can be really strong. But I, I really wanted to upgrade that, and you'll see why. It's just going to start giving me a lot of points. So the Atomas turn, we care about Gray again. They have three left. They're going to carve two. They bump this. This guy dies. Now, this these rules, I think, could be a lot clearer. So we're supposed to add this where it gives it the most points, but the Atoma does not get the benefit. This would give it a majority here, so that uh, that would definitely give them more points. So they're going to go to the leftmost spot, because you go reading order. They get this back as a three, because you're playing on expert mode. So they it never comes out of the game like ours does. If we have to grow it back, they just get it back. Um, so they bump that. Now they do the carving action. When they do the carving action, they're going to go to the bottom and around. So one, two, they're gaining this. And now they already have two carving tokens, which is crazy. So you can see why I'm trying to steal some of those pretty quick. I have to do a retrieve. So this dude dies. 
or he hibernates. I'm going to put myself a hibernation token here, and that's going to give me a wax. Waxes are good. And this comes here as a one. This guy becomes a three. This guy becomes a four. And I'm going to give myself uh, how many? I'm just going to get the one resource. I will take myself a pollen. Woof, I really don't like those development tiles. You know what? Those development tiles are bad. I'm actually going to take this wax and make these go away. And hopefully get better ones for my one wax. Immediately place a dead dude to get the bonus. Gain two tokens. That's good. Yeah, these are all way better. Build any two face-up farms for free. Those are all way better. And I like how that might work well with education. So, we have a much better situation for us. The Atoma's turn. We only care about gray. They have two there. They don't have a level four, so carving action doesn't happen. They're going to go here for grow. This goes here. They have three points, so level three plus one. So they go from 12 up to 16. I'm on the scoring track a little bit, unfortunately. Just have that there. My turn, I don't want to bump them. Well, they don't have a level four, so I don't have to do that yet. I could teach a dance. I'm not really strong in points right now, though. But I want to be. I get two points there. All right, I'm going to make this a four. Since I did that, my faction ability, I do get a point. So now I'm up to three points. I started with two. Since I did that, I could teach a dance. When I teach a dance, I immediately get four queens favor. I'm going to teach the dance uh, two points on a seed card. So I can do a queen's favor. Now, I think I want to do one point for a honey. It's going to be the best way for me to get honey really big screw up because it, it affects something like this a lot um, but I, again I can only fit two honey pots so honey honey because remember I have a wax over here so honey honey and then I'm going to I have two more things I could do I could turn those into a wax, but I have no room for it, so that's not great. Um, yeah, I'm just going to forgo my, my two extra abilities to do a dance, and we'll just take the two honey for now. All right. Unless I should have taken... No, I like the idea of teaching a dance. Getting the honey... And we're going to have to start placing things pretty aggressively. Atoma's turn. They have only one gray left. So they're going to retrieve. They're going to get this becomes a four. This bumps here. Uh, it's more points for it to go here. So it's going to cover this up. Because now again, majority is seven. Again, I still think that rules for that are a little bit unclear. And then that will go three. Uh, that will become a three and go back there. So they retrieved and two points. They go from 16 to 18. My turn, I'm going to spend my four, come here. And I'm going to spend no honey to get this. Because I can carve for one less. I'm going to put that there, which is going to give me a level one worker. Excellent. Atoma's turn. They're going to look at their yellow. They have two left, so they don't retrieve. They don't have a level four, so they're going to explore. So they're going to go up here. They're going to move in this direction. What? One, two. I think there should be. That's weird. They should be moving toward this, but they, they bounce off. They go backwards. So one, 
two, three. There is not a planet there, so they're going to take this exploration token, which is points for them at the end of the game. They don't get any other benefit but the points. This comes out here. And since it has an open box, they're going to put a fiber on there because that's what their support card tells me to put. Great. My turn. I'm going to make this one into a two. That's going to give me a point because of my faction ability. And then I will come up. Now remember, I get points for adjacent things. I'm going to put this here. I'm going to grab, I'm going to spend my wax to get fight, flight path. I'm going to put this up here. And that gives me two exploration tokens, which can be very strong. So I'm going to put the one, again, I point at all adjacent things. So I'm going to get this. I want the water now. I'm going to get this. I want the dude. Probably. I would get this to gain this guy. And I'm going to get two exploration tokens. I'm going to take. This moves over. That's really strong. I need some honey. Uh, I'm going to get water. The two exploration tokens. I'm going to take a seed card. And I don't have room for a lot of this. So seed card and a point. This could be, oh, that's per food chambers per carving tile. Interesting. Seed card and a point. And since I took the exploration tokens out of there, this is, they just get tiles but we don't do anything else on the exploration. I did have to check the rules for that. We're going to go to the Atoma's turn. Atoma only cares about gray. It has, it has uh, one, it has three there. It does have a level four, so it's going to carve. Now it bumps me. I can take a tile. I can take a, um, a spot on the hibernation spot. So I'm going to take it. I'll try to get the majority here at seven points is nice. I'll take a water and this goes back as a one. Put this here and it's carving carve three from the bottom. So one, two, three, this goes away. So can I get the last two of those before I lose my opportunity? It is not going to be easy. So my turn, I'm going to place this guy. I'm going to make him a two, which gets me a point. And what I'm going to do is... Man, I need wax. I need wax really badly. I'm trying to get wax and honey, which is <laughs> not a really good thing. Uh, make him a two. I got the point. There's like one of these guys, which gives you like a special, like you could build these tiles for, for one less, which is super strong. Yeah, I'll go to here. I'm gonna immediately bump this guy. When did I take the water? I could have taken anything there. Let me not have taken the water because I knew I need wax. Let me take a pollen. Oh, I can't fit. Well, that's fine. Yeah, because you do this at the end of your turn. So I can go here. I'll take a thing. 
Now, I can't fit it, but I don't worry about that at the end of the turn. I place a thing here, so I get dig at this majority. I replace this whole row. Uh, that goes there, this goes there, this goes there. I have not researched at all. This comes back here as a one. And now I could do two conversions. I'm going to spend these four resources to get... Oh, that's dumb. That's really dumb. I can't fit two wax anyway. So I'll just do this to get one wax. All right, Atoma's turn. We only care about yellow. Do they have zero yellow left? They do not. They're going to explore. They bump this one down. So they don't. It's not a level four, so they don't carve. They're going to move how many spots? They're going this direction. So one, two. They're going to keep going until they get back to a place that has an explore token. They come back here. And this comes out. They place a water there. My turn, I retrieve. They become a three and a three. I'm going to get a resource from my one farm. I will take a pollen. A Toma's turn. They have, they don't retrieve because they have uh, they have more than, oh, yellow. They do retrieve. They only have, they have zero yellow. So this becomes a four. This becomes a three and two points. They go from 18 to 20. Four and three. So hopefully they do not pick a yellow support card because I'm going to try to get the next two carving tiles. My turn. I'm going to bump them off carve. Turn this into a four, which gives me a point. This bump's here. They're going to take that spot. And this comes back to them as a three. I'm going to spend one honey pot to grab this. And I'll use this to gain a level one worker. That's four points per carving tile. They have no more cards there, so they reshuffle all of them. I really don't want this to be a level. I don't want this to be a yellow support card. And whatever I flip over, because then they will probably take the last carving tile, and that will make me rather sad. All right. B gray, it is. Do they have zero gray? No, nope. they don't have a level four car a level four uh, gray so they're going to come down here they're going to do the convert action they go there they get four points they go from 20 to 24. i'm going to turn this into a four with my faction ability get a point so up to five i bump this he comes here i'll take two points this goes back here and then I'm going to spend one honey to carve this. I get two points per wax, three points per wax. Well, it's worth four points automatically as a food chamber, but yet yeah, not the most amazing result for me. And then I will take a water. Oof. A water. Uh, no, I'll take the fiber. I can't hold the fiber, so I get a queen's favor. Atoma's turn. There's only one left over there. So they're going to care about gray. They retrieve. They can't carve. They're going to go to convert. They do bump this. It comes back here to a four. And they get four points. They go from 24 to 28. My turn. I'm going to turn this into a two. I get a point. We're going to come over here. I can get up to a three. I think I end the game, which is crazy. So I'm going to buy 
Yeah, I'm gonna spend this wax. Get this. Gives me a water. Let's be immediately place a gray uh, a thing. So I'm gonna place this here. That gives me a queen's favor. That triggers end game. So there's one more turn for them. One more turn for me. Um, everyone stays. Oh, I guess I can do a retrieve turn. So there's a weird rule. If, like all your things are dead. You can just you start. You just get a level one worker. It's pretty common with this faction because the way they just continually can enhance their their faction size. I didn't plant any things, which I thinking might have been a mistake. Man, I can't. I only had one wax. Part of me is... What's the chances that they trigger endgame? The chances of them triggering endgame aren't high, so let me undo this for a sec. I still had a wax. I did make that a two. I like this more. I'm going to come here. This is going to go back. I'm going to come here. I bump that to a four, which is fine. I'm going to do this. And can, I can do this up to two things. Oh, man. I'll convert that into a wax. And I'll convert this into a fiber. So I did this exchange, pollen and fiber for a wax, and then resource of any type to resource of any type. Me not getting any research cards has made this a very, very strange game. All right, now the Atoma's turn. They don't have zero things. They can't carve. There's nothing left to carve. So they're going to go to grow. And they're going to get, it's a four. So they get six points. And expert in mode, they get seven. So they're going to go from 28 to 35. Now I'm going to trigger in game. I'm going to, well, I have to retrieve. Right. Wow, so I'm going to retrieve. This becomes here. That's a queen's favor. This replaces everything in the farm row. One, two, three. This comes over here. This guy ages to a three. I can get one resource. I'll take a pollen. And now we both have one more turn. So Atoma's last turn, because I triggered endgame now. So Atoma's last turn. They have, they don't retrieve. They can't carve. There's nothing up to carve. So they're going to go to research. This comes here. They get seven points. They get up to 42. That's a lot of points, yo. My turn, I'm going to turn this into a four. That gives me a point. I'm going to put it here. And... I'm going to spend my... Oh, man, that's dumb. I'm going to... I'm basically neutering how many points that's worth. No. I got a four, right? Ah, uh, But I really want to fill my board, too. Woof. Woofity woof. Nah, I think I'm spending a lot of points to do this. I'm spending six points to do this, but I'm going to get it back. And I have a chance to do something better with it. So we're going to go here, spending these four, these two wax. I'm going to get this guy. That gives me a water. That lets me build any two face-up farms for free. 
So that's three points. That's a wax. That's the income I needed. This will let me get two of these cards. See if any one of them is useful. Excellent. Excellent. So at the end of my turn. Um I can, so the end of my action I can use these cards. So I can recollect from one of my exploration tokens. So I'm gonna recollect from this one, which gives me a point, and then I can refresh the, the display on the board and purchase things for a minus one wax. That seems to make sense. What was this one? Huh, nice. Um, so we're going to refresh these. Ooh, that's pretty sick. So I can build this. Or I could do that. So cleansing flight. They're both worth one point. I'll take this guy and I can discard up to two farms and for each farm I discard I get two points so I'll discard both of those for four points because we have the 14. All right, that is the end of the game. Let me see the, the comments. Uh, Scott, I have not heard great things about this one but I want to try it for myself. I mean bees. Jeremy, so in your honest opinion this is as good as me tonight. <laughs> no. Lana's just showing thanks for the playthrough. Lines from Atona Factory, not sleepy either. Uh, oh, what's up, Linus? How are you? Just finished a game night, but yeah, should be in bed. It's a solo. Solo Manolo says you still get three points for doing the advanced action with a strength 4B. Yes, I do that too. Excellent. Thank you. So this gets up to 17. All right. So we're going to go to scoring. The scoring for the Atoma. I put the thing here so the scoring for the atoma they're gonna we're gonna take their tiles so we managed to kind of truncate the game a bit which i think is one of the really big strengths of um arty against the atoma so they're gonna get two points for the farm tile they had they only had one so they go from 42 to 44 they had one development tile they're gonna have four points for that so 44 to 48 and they had three carving tiles because woof. So 21 points. So 48 to 69. What? What? Uh, sorry, can't help myself. And they have no area majorities over here. They have two explore tokens to get eight points for that. So they're at the 77. Huzzah. My turn. I'm going to get. Um, that's right. Yeah, it's good call with Solo. That's another reason. Yeah, going there is the right. I mean, I dev I threw away my wax. But remember, this only cost me one honey. It filled the thing. And then it also gave me four points from the food chamber. So that all kind of worked out. So uh, my scoring is going to be more standard. We're going to look at the left side of all my things and get points per. Oh, you know what I should have done? I could have kept. No, let me keep my farms. Let me keep my farms. Oh, shoot. Where was I? I think I was at 17. Instead of doing this, I could discarded all my explore tokens and got the same four points. Right. That made more sense. So, again, I could have gotten either one. I just took the wrong one because I wasn't thinking through it. And now I'm going to count points. So, two, four, five, six, seven, eight points. So, those farms give me now two more points. So, I got them 17 to 25. So, eight points from tiles on my board. All right, we're now going to do uh, carvings. This carving gives me 12 points. This carving gives me five. So I have 17 points for my carvings. That goes from 32 to 42. Position of the queen's favorite track. I get three points from that. So I go from 42 to 45. My factions and game ability, there is none. And then uh, hibernation co majorities. I'm going to get seven. Oh, the Toma is going to get two points 
from that majority, he did have at least two. I'm going to get 10, so I got smushed. I go from 45 to 55, and uh, that's uh, <laughs> it's a pretty big walloping, man. The expert mode essentially adds a point a turn. Um, I still just can't figure out. Well, here's the thing. I don't want to get so good at this game that I don't play with my friends anymore, which is one of the reasons I won't really ever dig into it solo. But you're just, you're trying to get to level fours as soon as possible. The Atom is also going to level fours. I think you, you know, I didn't plant any of these cards, which isn't great, you know, because they can really give you a lot of, a lot of end game points. But the, the variety is pretty nuts. I mean, there's, you have one, which is like one point for resource. And there's some games you can play where you just end with like 12 resources. I mean, that's two poor B. There are factions that give you a ton of points for end game, uh, which I think is interesting. So I really haven't figured out, you know, how you're supposed to approach this game against the Atoma in any way that's realistic. I mean, if you, you, if you're not rushing end game, I just, they're still going to outscore you. Cause again, I rushed the carving tiles and they were still, they were getting like seven points a turn at that point now, which was really sick. Really, really sick. Like if you never do carving tiles, if I punt those 42 points, there's no way I'm getting enough points from research to make that worth it, to make that, to make up for that. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm a, I'm of, I'm of, I'm not wow with this game as a solo game. And I, and I think that's just partially just the nature of the game. I don't know what else you could do to it. Except maybe not play an expert. Maybe like playing an expert is just a really bad idea. Like I don't, tend to play scythe on like the super high modes i mean that would be one experiment like you play this on level five like maybe level six is just really bananas because level five the the atoma is going to be quite pretty a lot slower in a lot of the things they do 7-eleven already woof I'm tempted to, to run it back at level five. That's crazy. I mean, I've beaten this on level four. If you figure this game was, you know, again, they're getting an extra point pretty much every round, but it's the same level workers. the uh, big do I want to run this back we'll run it we'll run it back at level five and then see how that goes maybe get some researching done if I try a different strategy I saw this tile I saw that carved tile and I was like that could be a good combo but maybe that's only a good combo if I was really able to get the tiles that would have been better like if I instead of having this tile well that's garbage if I had this but then the, yeah it doesn't none of that really works I don't know I mean, it's, I mean it's funny like it's a guaranteed 7 points for the Atelma where like it might only be 4 for you which is like crazy I mean that the one again that one carving tile was essentially in itself worth 0 but it was worth four points because of the food chamber. So, like, that's, like, a thing. And there's so many carving tiles. Like, there is a ton of luck in the, the, the variance that comes out. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just not. I'm not. not loving the solo. I, I mean, I want to like it solo. Like, I like the mechanics of it. I like the... Uh, I still like the game. I like building out my hive. I like turning my bees over. There's something very satisfying about just like the components and whatnot. 
So we have advancement. Let's, uh, I'll probably get one carving tile this game. Let's see how this works for me. Let's see if I can, can't get four research. Well, that's a two per farm. These look a lot easier. 15 points, you have at least one of each. Whoa. Oh, one of each is adjacent, but still, wow. But so you'd have to get two carving tiles. Oh, that's interesting. You'd have to get, because you'd have to have this and then another carving tile adjacent to it. Fermentation is just four points. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there is a, there is a crazy... I like it and I don't, but there's a crazy variance in what things can do for you in the in the cards and in some of the abilities and some of the things are like, why would I ever choose that strategy? I will pretty much not do a dance this round. That's almost guaranteed. Queen's favor. This goes here. I still haven't seen an errata about the zero point one points on the track, so that's another thing to keep in mind. You know, and I think the farms are interesting. I mean, you get a farm that gives you a wax and in income, like all of a sudden that like really opens up your game in a different sense. Um, you get a farm that gives you a level one worker in income, which some of them do. Like it's a a very different game. You know, I think against the Atoma, it's almost like you need to get farms to just give you a lot of point income. Did I shuffle these? I don't remember. I assume I did. We'll do it again. Oh, it doesn't matter if I did because we have all these over here. Yeah, I mean, it's, the problem is if you're letting them do, if you're taking your time and you're you're punting the hibernation cone majorities, which is a problem. And you're punting carvings. I'm just not sure where your points are coming from quick enough to make this really work. Although, again, the difference between level 5 and level 6 looks just absolutely crazy to me. Just, like, kind of looking at it, because they're going to they're gonna be hibernating so much slower as the game goes. But I played on level 4 and 1, but again, they, you're getting a lot less points on level 4 than they do on level on the expert side. So, all right, let's play level five. So we have a three, two, two, and they're gonna refresh at a two, not a three. And this is a three and a one. These can come off, these come off. This comes off. Queen ship goes back there. I think the S curve is weird because if I start there, I'm not actually hitting the corner. But I, I guess it just means the general direction. So like, yeah, I, I think that's a. There's something weird about the S curve for me that I'm, I'm not totally seeing, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm doing it right. But it, it seems like you can't really have an S curve, or like you're just going toward that corner because if you're going away from that corner, the other corner, like it's not always going to work out. There's not the right number. Oh, that's a really strong tile right there. Let's kind of look up the S curve real quick for the explore. I 
Oh, so you actually just go, huh? Two, three. You go through the queen. Okay, so this is like the end then. That makes a little more sense. Oh, weird. So it's almost like the queen ship should be on that side if that's what you're doing. Because then, then you have a true S. Yeah, but then I guess when you go up, it would be a different thing. All right. Yeah, the art makes it pretty good. So I, I might have done one or two of those moments wrong, but again, with the explore, it's not as important as with other actions. So we're gonna get a new starting hive. Let's. We're not gonna do the log because we already have seen what that does. I think the other ones are more interesting, like Poppleton. Excellent. I think that will be cooler. We're not gonna play with Artie. We have 17 left. That's 13, so 70, 16, 15, 14, and 13. And we have 16 left. That's 7, so 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, and Cine. All right. So upgraded is 4 points per adjacent development tile at the end of the game. And then this is whenever you acquire 4th active work to gain 3 resources. And it starts with four resources. I like that. We'll we'll go with Aria. I don't know. Four active workers might not be what I want to do. But I do like the resources. It might work. Might not. Like some way, the four active worker might have worked better with the other thing that was giving me workers. No, I'll take Cinny. He's, oh, man, but that seems so lame. I like the ability things. Uh, whatever. All right, we're going with Aurea, which I'm not sure is the right choice. But what do I know? So that, we get a fiber. We get two waters as our starting resources. And we start with a two and a one, just like last time. Uh, the starting tiles. Collect all of your farm income when you gain that one. Gain a wax for every recruit you have. Plan up to two plots. That's a great card late. Whenever you build a farm adjacent to me, gain a point. Gain when you grow, you gain a level one thing for free. I like that a lot. Uh, I don't know if I did the other ones backwards. So two points in a queen's favor, three queen's favor, and a point. So again, things are not that are not giving me resources exactly. Atoma is going to go first. Everything is set. Except for the dances, which I don't anticipate doing. So I'll just flip those over. Nothing giving me frames. We'll see how this plays out. Bam. So we care about gray. Uh, we have three there, so that all that doesn't apply. We're going to do the convert action. Bam. And we're on expert road, so it gets an extra point. So it goes from one up to five. My turn, we're going to go here, not, not there, we go here, man, I need like income of a wax, but it did not happen. This lets me build a development for free when I get up there. So definitely want to blitz that to some extent. So we're going to go here. going to spend the pollen. When I grow, I get a thing for free. Huzzah. 
And they get a queen's favor. Could try to blitz their queen's favor track, especially with that. This comes back. Back over. Thomas turn. It is yellow. Do we have zero yellows? No, we have two. Do we have a little four yellow? No, we do not. We're doing a grow action. So this comes here. Uh, it's going to get three points plus one because of extra mode. It goes from five to nine. I was going to go grow next. Now I am kind of reluctant to make that happen. I'll come here with the two, bump this, spin the fiber and the water. Put this here, get the point. Up to three. Atoma's turn. We care about yellow. Do we have zero? Nope, we have one. We can't carve. We're going to do a grow action. We're going to bump this, becomes a four. Since it's a one, we get one point plus one. Because of extra mode, we go from nine to 11. This comes over, this comes over. I'm going to um, retrieve, this two becomes a three. Now one thing I haven't talked about is the landing area. So you can, you can choose when you're bumped to not go back to the active pool to instead go to the landing area and you don't age and you can still get farm income when you do your retrieve turn. I haven't seen a strategy where that would be really effective. Uh, but it is indeed something you can do. I'm going to get three queens favor. So zero, one, two, three. And that's my only income. And now I have a, a three and a two. Uh, we're going to go to the Atoma's turn. Bam. Do we have, we have one yellow. We're going to turn it. So this comes off, it becomes a two. And since we retrieved, it gets two points. So it goes from 11 to 13. Uh, my turn. I'm going to explore. I'm going to go here. I'm going to get one resource of every type. So a pollen, a fiber, and a water. We have room for all of that. It's a really nice exploration token. This comes off. There's an air is a, an interesting thing. So if we go there with level four, we get two resources and three points. It can be strong. So we get a fiber, and I can make it produce one other resource. I will make it produce uh, water. That yeah, makes the most sense. I was thinking about maybe trying to blitz this queen favor thing a little bit, but now we'll make it produce water. We'll take the water because I'm going to do grow action. Next, oh, maybe I should do grow as a level four. It's also an idea. All right, Atoma's turn. Atoma doesn't have zero grays. No, it does not. It does have one gray. No, it has two. It can't carve because now there's a level four. It's going to research, so it's going to go here. It gets two points plus one because of expert goes to 16 points. I'm going to spend this three. Wow. to put it here. Fine, I'll spend the pollen and the two water. We'll get this guy. Comes up here, gives me a point. These move over and replenish. Yeah, not well. That will give me resources. All right, Atoma's turn. Atoma is doing a. Do we care about gray? It has one gray left, so it will retrieve. This becomes a three. This becomes a four, and we get two points. I mean, just an absolute slower pace this time around than on level six. 
My turn, I'm going to retrieve. This becomes a four. This becomes a three. I can get two income. I'm going to get three queen's favor, four queen's favor, and two points. So up to seven and two points. So just kind of trying to try to blitz this track, get 25 points from this, and see what happens. Matoma's turn. I care about gray. It has three there. We do have a four, so it is going to take a carving tile. Again, we're punting carving to some extent. Going this way, so we're grabbing this. It takes this up there, and that's its turn. My turn. I'm going to go to the Yeah, I don't think I care about upgrading my faction, to be honest. So I'm going to go here with the three. Since I do the grow action, I automatically get one of these. And then I'm going to spend the pollen and my other two resources to get my last worker and one of these. When I do that, I now have all four of my active workers. Now, my upgraded side is when I get my fourth worker, I can get three points. I don't think I'm going to be doing that enough to make that worth the effort, and I don't want to waste a four on grow. So I'm going to do that, and then I can set my four workers. I get three resources. They have to be basic. I will grab two fiber and a water. And oh, boy. Am I going to want to get Oh, interesting. Oh, that's a thing. Oh, that's also interesting. That's not happening. It could happen. Get three resources. I'll take a fiber, a water. I'll take a two pollen. I'll take a fiber, a water, and a pollen. I think makes the most sense. One of each. Variety pack. Combo meal. Whatever you want to call it. All right, Thomas' turn. We care about yellow. We have two left there. We're researching with the four. So again, it rarely does non-carving actions with fours, but this is one of those exceptions. So it's going to research, because again, it doesn't have a, a thing. I was going to get a research next. That's a little gross. So it's getting seven points. It goes to 25. Woof. I wanted to do that for real. For real. That's not great. I don't have great options. I was definitely researching next. I can explore. That farm isn't great. But whatever. It is a farm. So. Sure. I'm going to go here. I'm going to spend the one water to get this tile. When I go there, I get to build the development for free. I'm going to build this development. And that's to be built to the right. When I do that, I click all my farm income once. I'm going to get one, two, three points and four queen's favor. So seven to 11, three points, six to nine. And that, my friends, is fine. So this carving tile looks interesting. That's going to be super hard. That's interesting. That's just five points. And if I can hold on to a bunch of resources at the end, foundation could be interesting as well. 
So again, this is five points, one per uh, resource, basic resource, two per farm, four per adjacent recruit, and then 15 if, it, if it's adjacent to a farm or recruit, a um, development, and another carving. So Atoma's turn, we care about yellow. There are There is one left, it cannot carve, it's going to explore. It's moving two, it's moving in this direction. So it's going to go one, two. It got one of the good tokens, unfortunately. Put a planet there, and we're going to make that planet. Ooh, so that's gain a one and a seed card if you go there with a four. And we're going to put a pollen thing there. I want it to reclaim its yellows. Hmm. One, 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 three. Great. I'm going to go here with the one. We're going to explore. I'm going to get two seed cards. So discard any tile from your thing to get three points. Pay three to gain a pay three resource to any type to get a frame. Uh, two points per hibernation token place, or six points if you have 15 or higher on the queen's favor track. We're going to put this out. And it's a boring planet. I can just get one resource. The resource I want will be water. So I can get, oh, I think I was on the nine. Said six to nine, if I'm not mistaken. I'll take the water. Three. How the heck do they get to the nine? Am I not supposed to be on the nine? Of course, like of all the ways that could have fallen, <laughs> it fell and knocked my chip off. Um, all right, so I was at one, two, three, four, five. This is a point, right? This is a point. So I think that's right. I think I was on the nine. I got that income of three. So I started at the two, four, income once, plus three income. Yeah, I should be at the nine. Excellent. All right, Atoma's turn. Again, I could turn these into resources, which could be helpful, especially if I want something but i actually like both of those seed card scoring opportunities so we'll see we care about gray are there zero or one left no there are two we don't have a four so it's going to explore it's going to go here it's going to bump this into a three these come down down uh it's going up to the so one so one two we only care about the strength of the worker. Doesn't We don't add for them. That is an empty place because another exploration token. We put this planet out. It is going to get a pollen. Hmm. I could teach a dance. I think I'm going to teach a dance. Ugh. All right, let me get the other dance tiles. Yeah, I don't want to bump it off anything. And I could use a honey pot, so... The dances are this and this for this and this, or I could spend two to get a thing. And honestly, I might have enough that I can sacrifice some. And... I'm 
two per farm. I mean, this would be really easy to get farms. Be really easy to get farms. So I'm gonna go here at the four. I'm gonna teach a dance. When I teach against, I get four, so I go from eleven to fifteen. Interesting too. Yeah, let me get some honey. So I can do three exchanges. This is pretty. I have the room too, so I'm going to spend four of this down to fi down to 11, get two honey. So the four I just got. I still think I'll be okay there. So honey, honey. And then I'm going to spend uh, this and this for a wax. And then we're going to convert this to a pollen. All right. Thomas' turn. Uh, we care about gray. Does it have zero grays? No, it has one left. It cannot carve with this. It's going to go to advance. It's going to bump me down. It has a level two worker, so it's going to grab this and this. It automatically clears this and this. These move over. We get two more out. So that is carving costs one less. Research lets you keep a second card. That's really nice, actually. The geneticist. Super great. So that's it. That's their turn. My turn. I'm retrieving. This guy dies. I'm gonna take the oh man, that'd be so gambly. Sure, why not? I'll take the honey. I'm like really looking at the harvest. Fifteen points is nice. So I was the first to get one on here. Yeah, it hasn't sent anyone to the hibernation comb yet, which is really sick. This goes out here. And now I have, this one becomes a four, this one becomes a two, this one becomes a two. I can get income from my three farms, so it's going to be four of these and three points. One, two, three. So two, four, two. All right, then. Atoma's turn. Uh, looking at grays. Do we have zero grays? We do. So it retrieves them all to get two points. One, two. Three becomes a four. Four becomes a three. This one goes away. It's going to take over the most points for that. This would give it a tie. So this gives it four points here. This would only give it three. So it's going to go there. And now it comes back as a two because we're playing at level five, not level six. My turn. I should carve while I have the chance. I have three honeys. Great. Carve. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it here and try to get it adjacent. I just need to get it adjacent to a a thing and a another carving. I put that there. I take a card. Teach one dance you haven't. Taught a dance you may use a conversion once and then seven points if you have no frames. I'm obviously just going to use that for a resource. So not the greatest card, but I did get a carving tile. Uh probably want to get to grow to get my last level one. That gives me a bunch of resources. 
One per resource is nice. Oh, I have to actually spend the honey pots. That would be helpful, Greg. <laughs> that would give me another honey. Pollen patty, collect. What well, the appendix in this game is also quite good. Development pollen patty. Sure, do not increase your strength. You may collect income from one farm for each worker retrieved. Okay. I don't know why that symbol is like that. All right. Atoma's turn. Yeah, he just retrieved. We care about yellow. Uh, it has a thing. It cannot carve. It's going to go to the convert. It's a level three. It gets three points plus one. So it goes from 27 to 31. Hey, now. I'm going to go here with my two. Grab this. Put this here. The two plus one equals a three, so I can't get from there. So I spend the wax, but then I gain one wax as I have one recruit, so I just gain the wax back, but I also get a seed card, get two different, get activate two different recruit abilities from face up farms on the board and gain five points. That's nice. Oh, gives you two frames right off the bat. Right off the jump. You spend three resources to get another frame is interesting. That's six points. That's going to be a lot of points, too. So I probably just do the fermentation and try not to get any more honey. And then just I want to plant seed cards like crazy and retrieve and make sure that gets to the top. Atoma's turn. That's at the end. What's up, Maze Knight 84? Clever Swine says, just checking in. Clever Swine says, came by to say hi as well. Never heard of this game. I played Wigstrom with our son this weekend. I actually enjoyed it. Have played it in a long time. Just got Redlands. with the wife and Skyter Horde decided to arrive today. Yeah, Redlands is fine. It's a little wacky. It's like one of those games, though. It's like a quick game, so you don't mind it, but it definitely doesn't feel like the most balanced to me. Skyter Horde is, is very good. I, I'm probably not revisiting anytime soon but i do like a lot of what they have there um so rather looks fun so far it is we're only a couple games in jeremy says can't stop playing doing imperium solo myself uprising that is yeah i i've heard the new expansion is pretty good maze nine is right man versus me but one of the best games this year I haven't tried it solo yet yeah it's excellent i don't love it solo so you might not be missing much uh gray uh we're carving two so it's actually bumping me which is going to let me take that last wax, which makes me happy. I'll take this wax. I have room for it there. That also makes me refresh the development row, which is actually good because I didn't love those cards. Although the plant up to two, move up to three of your things, gain the bonuses, build any two face up recruits for free. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You may replace up two of your planet cards with others. This is now a one. He's carving two coming from the bottom. So one, so he just, just keeps moving until it hits two things. So one, two, it gets this one. And that's its turn. E. All right. I'm going to need to get my dudes back. So I'm going to grow. I get one for free because of my guy. Oh, do I want to grab that now?
and then I could spend my pollen on the other one. When I do that, I can get three resources. I'll take two pollen and a fiber. And that's because of my faction ability. Remember, I can get lots of resources from these too. I spent three versus to get a frame. All right. That's fine. So now I have all my dudes again. Atoma's turn. I care about yellow. We do retrieve all. This gets bumped. It's going to come here. Goes back as a two. So that, because again, that ties it. That gives it four points. Goes back as a two. This becomes a four. And it gets two points because it retrieved. So 31 to 33. So I might lose the um, majority in that central hibernation thing, which isn't great. I'm going to go... Wow, I'm going to need frames, yo. I'm going to go here, bump this. Spending one wax to build this guy. have to get another carving there. That gives me one there. It lets me build two of these for free. I'm going to build this. Oh, yeah. I'm going to build this one and this one. That gives me another thing here. And that goes there. So as long as I get a carving in there, we're good. I do need to get a frame. And considering how badly I need a frame, I'm just going to do this now at the end of my action. All three of my resources get a frame. I'll put that there. It was six points, but it's seen more important to do that. So that was a super strong turn. We gained four resources. Cool. I got that carve guy again, so carving is one less, so I can get um, either one of these. I think foundation will make more sense. Atoma's turn. We care about gray. It's not retrieving. It doesn't have a level four, so it's going to explore, so it's going to go here. It's a level three worker, so it's moving as it's going this way. So it goes one, two, turns around, three. There's no planet there. Takes that. It's going to put a fiber on this planet. So it's a very, a lot of fiber in your diet on the planet of Aral. Amazing. My turn. I have this last level one. Oof. Pretty far from a four, which doesn't make me super happy. Because I definitely need to start planning some things. I need to plant some dudes. All right. And I need to go to the carving action one more time, too. So we have competing interests. Competing interests everywhere. Um, maybe I retrieve... Yeah, I'm going to retrieve. So I'm retrieving early. So three, three, two. That's going to give me four queen's favor and three points. So I go from 17 to 21 up there and three points, 12 to 15. <sighs> Wish I had a card that... I'll probably just place the threes, to be honest. Not planted. Crap. Alright. Atomas Terminus. I'm probably going to leave the majority bonuses too. I'm not moving quick enough. Uh, yellows. Nope. Does not retrieve. It does carve. So it bumps this guy there. He comes back as a 2 because we're playing at level 5, not level 6. It's going to get the majority bonus here, which makes me a little sad. It does replace the row still. So one, 
two, three. And then the carving action carves one coming from the top. So it's taking fermentation over there. I mean, either one, uh, either one of those, I'm, oh, never mind. I should have placed this here. That's totally legit. It doesn't change anything. I didn't put anything on there yet. <laughs> because if I have to get this guy, um, I will need another honey pot, but I, I need another carving. So, oh, per adjacent, woof. Uh um yep just in case uh, i need to get this to a four quick so i'll put this here it doesn't have any fours but it does mean i just need to get a four out so i have a one two three three I'm going to place does a lock something else for me. So if I use the three, just get the point. Yeah, I'm going to use the three. I'm going to spend my wax. Get the point. I can't replace I didn't plant anything, so I'm not replacing anything, but I am getting a card, and that's a three-point tile. Ooh, two queen's favor. Two. If I plant it, it's two points per development tile, so that's a lot of points, too. This moves over. Gain two, then plant two. Oh, hell yeah. All right, Thomas' turn. We care about gray. It's not retrieving. It's gonna put this in grow. It gets four. Oh yeah, that's dumb. I'm gonna put this. Yeah, I just need to do the resources one. Forget this. I mean, <laughs> trying to. There's no great way for this to be. You know what I could have done is put this here. Makes life easier for the camera. And then I could have had this here. And that would have gone there. And I still got the card. Great. Um, so it's gonna grow. It gets two points plus one, so one, two, three. I don't think I gave that yet. Again, plus one for expert mode. Put these over here. My turn. Tempted to retrieve. Three honey. Oh man, I need wax. I need wax like crazy. Put the three here. 
I'm going to move this down to in case I need this honey. I'm going to spend I'm going to use this to get a fiber and a um, pollen and then I'll spend those fiber and a pollen to get one wax. Two. They'll both become threes and that's exactly what I want. Great. That's Homa's turn. Uh, we care about gray. It has one left there, so it will reclaim. So this becomes a three. This becomes a four. Two points. 36 to 38. I better get that carving tile while I can. Oh, crap. I have to retrieve first. I'm retrieving. These both become fours. Man, it's going to take my carving dial. I get two incomes. I'm going to take four queen's favor and two points. Atoma's turn. We care about gray. That's horrible. Carve. This goes here. This moves over here. We get a thing. This comes back as a two. And we care about three coming from the top. So one, two, three. It actually gets this one. One, two, three. That's how that works. And it goes off. It does not have another four to take. So no rush on that carving tile. Yeah, can't carve for a minute. So I know I'm getting that carving tile. I know kind of how I want to make this end game work. So I'm going to come here. Spend this wax. Grab this tile. It gets me this card. And I want all the resources. Take one, two, three. I'll take two water, two pollen. Can't fit a ton of basic resources, but I'll fit enough to make that a decent tile for me. This comes over here. Yeah, getting another farm might not be the worst idea. So I'm wondering if I can fill up both of those things. Atoma's turn. Uh, we care about yellow. It is researching. Why is it always in my way? It's getting three points. One, two, three. Why are you always in my way? would like to fill that. Two points. Am I retrieving? I'm probably retrieving. If I three to gain a B. All right, I'm going to discard this to get a fiber, spend a water, grab this. Oh, I'm placing the one. This moves down. Grabbing this, place it over here. These come out. Thomas' turn. We care about gray. There are two left. It can't carve with that. It's going to research. It bumps this to a three back to the board. It gets four points, 41 to 45. Huh. Thomas' turn. We care about yellow. Not recruiting. We're going to go to convert. 
it gets four points, 45 to 49. I'm going to research. This comes back as a four. Look at four cars, plant one. This will be worth five points. This is going to be worth six. This will be worth five. This will be worth seven. This is going to be worth a bundle. And I'm not going to need, I'm going to retrieve. So. Take this card, and then I'm going to plant this card, which seems, again, one of those cards I'm shocked isn't limited in how much it can score you, because it's a lot. So, Atoma's turn. Care about yellow. We are retrieving. This three becomes a four. Two points up to 51. Um... Going to uh, retrieve. So this is going to come down here. Goes back here as a one. I get two points. Seventeen to nineteen. Uh, this is going to also. It says I can't place him. I just get another queen's favorite. It gets a 24. Um, and then this becomes a 3. This becomes a 2. And I'll take one queen's favor and 3 points. Gets me up to 22. Everyone has one more turn, including Mr. Atoma. All right. Atoma's turn. Uh, not, cares about yellow, not retrieving, it's advancing. Oh, it's a strong turn for it to end the game. So it gets one, two, three. These come out. These move over. I just want to fill this frame to get the points. Uh, my turn. What is going to be the cheapest? Well, none of this is great. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a... Oh, I wish I had a... One wax. That would have been amazing. Maybe hibernate. Yeah, I love the caretaker. I will remember you. Discard. Retrieve. Alright. I'm going to spend this to get a wow they're all expensive to get a fiber putting this in here this comes here to fill that and then at the end of that action i'm going to discard these two cards to get resources so at least makes that worth some points Woo! all right Cocktail time here. Be well, all. Thank you, Clever Swine. Have a wonderful evening. All right, so that's the end of the game. The Atoma is, has a lot more tiles than last time. It scored a lot more points than last time, and I really don't know who won yet. So, expert mode is hard. Newsflash. All right, so two farm tiles, so four points, 51 to 55. Done. Recruit tile, two of them. Six points, 55 to 61. Carving, oh, development tile, four points, 61 to 65. And four of these, 28 points, 65, 73, 93. 
Remember, they were at 69 at this point last turn. <laughs> Woo! All right. Uh, explore tokens, three, 12 points, 105. Yeah, I just got walloped. I just, I don't understand. Uh, majorities, uh, 10 points here, 115. Okay. Well, that's in, that's in, that's ex, uh, that's an exciting development. My turn. Seed cards. I have two points per red tile, so that's going to be um, ten points. So thirty-two. I have uh, points here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 32 to 48. Any carving. So 15 points plus 4 is 19 points. So 48, 57, 67. Queen's favorite track is another 25, so 67, 72, 92. No end game ability and two points for the hibernation comb. I, <laughs> I can't. I don't understand. I mean, if if the if literally the difference between expert, I mean, this is the equivalent of level. This is the equivalent of level three. Um, one, the carvings are the same, but one, two, three, four, five. You know, how many times they got one extra point? I, I mean, they beat me by 21. I don't, maybe they got one extra point 21 times. I don't know. <laughs> it, it just seems, oh, uh, you know what? I don't think I did this last time either, but it, it definitely would have mattered last time. Is this not on the scoring thing? Oh, it is right here. Yeah, hive mat fill, and I have two uh, hive mats full, so I get 24 more points. So 118. I win! What the heck? Right, so I got eight points for the hive, four for the two frames, and eight for each of the frames. So I got 24 points for that. All right. Woo! <laughs> I was going to say, dude, if that's not a win, something's really wrong. Uh, cool. Yeah, if you're not playing an expert, like, they're, I probably won by 30. So that's a, that's a very different game. Um, if you are playing on level six, every time they come back from hibernation they come back as a three so that's a much shorter game so I, at that point i don't think there's any chance there's no way i would have filled this much so that that absolutely matters um this seed card is very very good you know obviously a lot of the i don't think that any other seed card would have won me that game i definitely had a game with my friend zach where i was like i just needed a seed card to give me like four points and i just could not get one for the life of me in my last two times I tried. Um, and uh, so sometimes you can get unlucky. Or the last one time I pulled like four cards. I need, I think I pulled, yeah, I think I pulled four cards. I just needed one of them to give me four points. And I just whiffed on all of them. And I was like, that, I mean, that's really rare. Um, you know, and there's, there's obviously a chance I, I missed something. You know, had I been able to turn this into a wax out of the honey, the blitzing, this was super interesting. I mean, I got 49 points just from filling stuff in the queen's favorite track so that's cool um yeah i think uh you know if you look at the other starting faction it's hard to say i wouldn't have had a much easier time smushing with sinny you know because it's at the end of the game in three points so you can for end of the game with four points per adjacent uh one of these tiles so i obviously would have had to space out things differently but that could have been really effective but yeah harvest is pretty interesting but yeah, if you're if you're just getting two carvings and you're punting majority bonuses, like it's going to be a much higher scoring game. I'm not sure, you know, if you can. I tried to blitz the game with carvings last time, and I still only got three, and I kept them only. Th they only had like sixty something points, and I 
you know, still lost by like 15, right? So um, it's it's an interesting puzzle. Again, I think this game is a lot better competitively. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't I don't think, you know, I'm curious if there's any other thoughts out there that anybody who's really loving this solo. Like, if, look, if, if you just really like, again, solo Atomo experiences, I, I you, Atomo Factory definitely delivers a, another solid experience. This is a super easy to manage Atomo. So from that standpoint, it's not fiddly at all. It's super accessible. It's a great way to learn some of the strategies of the game, see a bunch of the cards. But again, I've always had the problem with that. When I do that, like, I get... I just I outpace my friends and how good I get at the game and then like no one wants to play with me anymore. So <laughs> it's always in the back of my head with a game like this. Like I play Gaia solo more than anything. Why? Because no one wants to play with me, right? <laughs> they will play many games with me. Gaia is not one. Same with Scythe, you know, it happened to me for sure. So um I think that is always a concern. I have, but yeah, it's, I mean, I guess it'd be a good way to kind of test out, you know, each of the factions. I mean, the 20 different factions, they are pretty unique. You know, 18 of which you can play solo. Um, there's some really, when you explore a planet, gain a resource. I mean, you get, some of these guys get to reserve. Oh, that's pretty sick. Yeah, some you get to reserve, you know, things at the beginning of the game that only you can build. I mean, Sekro doesn't start with any resources, but starts with two recruits. I mean, like, some of that's really gross. You know, Nika, at any time, you can just get resources, convert them to honey. So you don't even have to do the convert action. You can just, at any time, you can convert, which can make uh, getting the carve actions a lot better. Did not expect to the dance to be so important in these solo games, but clearly that was, uh, you know, became pretty you know, it came a strategy that I felt the need to, to try to utilize. So I feel good about that. I feel good ending on a, on a level five expert difficulty win by three points with, uh, you know, thinking I lost and then remembering that I, I don't know how to add <laughs> and somehow skip the line in the instructions. So, um, this was super fun. Look, I'm going to try to get one more live stream on the channel before the end of the year. It will, almost inevitably be a mage night uh next year i do want to start hitting the ground running with the nature incarnate spirits because i do have my box of nature incarnate so i'm excited about that don't know if there are going to be any other review copies uh that i need to feature anytime soon which is good um well with my <laughs> obligatory apologies to steamforged who i'm sorry i uh, i just i need to spend the time to learn your games that I just haven't done and it's not great and uh you know life got busy so uh that is what it is with that said uh this was uh this was cool glad the chat was pretty active for a lot of this I know it is mad late for a lot of you uh in overseas but uh maybe I can get like a, a Saturday Saturday afternoon stream on maybe and um uh, you know, and then everyone can go enjoy the holidays and we will see each other all in the new year. So any questions, comments, epiphanies, please put them in the comment section below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, happy gaming. Sorry.